So it's been a few days since Oxygen OS 15, otherwise known as Android 15, launched for the OnePlus Open in North America. And I thought it would be a good time to give an update on a couple of aspects of this update. So the first thing that I absolutely have to tell you is that if you are still waiting for this update, there is a reason why that is happening. We need to go to the community.oneplus.com community website for the post talking about Oxygen OS 15. And if you scroll all the way down to the comments, you can see that there is this pinned reply here from the original poster where they say that they have temporarily paused the rollout for the latest update for the OnePlus Open. During the release process, he says, we encountered an unexpected charging issue that they are actively working to resolve. It's not critical, but they're taking it seriously. And so because of that, they are temporarily delaying that rollout. So again, if you've not gotten this update and you're hitting check for update constantly, hoping that it will arrive, this is what is going on. Hopefully you will see some sort of an update to this whenever the update is actually available once again. About four days ago, I posted on threads that I didn't think Oxygen OS 15 was enough to rip me away from my Pixel 9 Pro Fold, but I thought that One UI 7 could be different. And I want to tell you guys that not only did I change my mind about that, I'm here to admit that I was wrong uh, to underestimate Oxygen OS 15. I decided I need to do my due diligence and I need to daily drive this for at least a couple of days to kind of get the feeling of how this update is, and that's what I have done. And guys, I am quite impressed with what they have actually done here. Things are running very, very well. And there are a couple of things here that I just want to quickly touch on. It's nothing major, right? Like if you want to see the full breakdown of what's new in this version of Oxygen OS, there's already a video in the description down below for that. But like I said, just a couple of things. The first thing that I want to point out to you is that the longer I use this thing, the more I am just struck with how snappy it is, how quickly it jumps from thing to thing. Now, obviously, I am capturing this screen, so you're not going to see the true speed, the true smoothness of what is going on here. But I'll just tell you, while you're using this thing, it is quick. It is buttery smooth. And there's actually one thing I would recommend that you do to really push this thing to those absurd limits. Even just pulling down the notification shade has this really nice kind of bounce to it. Again, you're not going to see it properly on camera. Maybe I'll do some B-roll here to show you more properly what it looks like. It's never going to do it justice, but it just looks so smooth. But we're going to jump into our settings. We're going to enable developer options. I'm not going to show you that. I've shown you a million times, but it's developer options. Go into system and update. Go into where is it? Developer options. And we're going to scroll all the way down almost to the very bottom. I think I actually scrolled past it. Looking for the animation scale. Instead of having these set to 1x, put them on 5x. And what this does is it just speeds up the animations. The animations are very good, but when you speed them up, they just look blazingly fast and smooth. And I think that just overall, they give an even more intense impression of speed. So what else? Other than this thing just being maybe the fastest feeling phone that I have, something else that I noticed that I thought was a really nice little change was with the volume slider. I'm going to hit the volume button and you're going to see that it's going to pop up big. And then after it goes for a second, if you keep going with it, it shrinks down and it gets very, very small. So one click and it's big, another click and it's small. I really like that. Now, you may think that I'm absolutely insane. Of course, you can tap that little bar and make it big again, so you can kind of bring it back if you need to. You may think I'm crazy, but I like UI elements like this that are sort of clean, aesthetically speaking, but they get out of the way. I just think that that's a really nice little touch. Another really nice, simple touch, I think, is with the floating windows. I really enjoy what they have done with the new gestures on the floating windows. There's a little bar down here, and that bar can do one of two things. If you swipe down on it, you will maximize that floating, uh, that floating window, make it go full screen, or you can swipe up on it 
to dismiss it. This is just a nice, intelligent little change. Now, of course, if you want to go with the old controls or something equivalent to the old controls, if I can manage to do a floating window again, you still do have the little three dots up here at the top that will allow you to do whatever it is that you need to do. You can even minimize it, which I think is quite cool as well, which I think you can just drag it over and do the same thing. Yeah, so they're giving you like multiple different ways to accomplish the same task. But again, none of these UI elements are big or in the way. They're just clean and effective. Now, something else that is neither clean nor effective for me that I want to touch on again is this detail booster in the photo gallery app. I came across this post in the uh, OnePlus subreddit, and this person had this result. This is a flamingo before and a flamingo after, and I probably need to make this bigger. So this is picture one, and you'll notice that it is actually lower resolution, so that's going to make a bit of a difference. I think that's part of what this thing is actually doing. It's just giving you a higher resolution image. I may be wrong about that, but if we zoom in, you can see that, yeah, this is pretty grainy. It's also probably compressed by uh, Reddit to some degree, and if you zoom in, it does definitely look significantly cleaner. And so I looked at that and I thought, man, from my testing, again, that video, if I can remember to do this, will be in the description down below. From my testing, I was not getting anything approaching that sort of improvement. So I've tested it a couple more times and I just can't get it to do anything good at all. So we're going to do this as close to, you know, real time as we possibly can. I'm just going to quickly take a photo and we're going to run it through this AI detail booster and we're going to see if we zoom in what kind of improvements we're actually getting. And for me, the results just continue to be kind of weird. Like there's just strange things happening. Watch my strap there. Like what's going on there? Look at this bit of this potted plant. What's going on there? A lot of what it's doing is removing noise. So there's the before and there's the after. They've definitely removed a lot of the noise from the image, but there are times where removing that noise, smoothing things, it almost looks like anti-aliasing at times, almost causes you to lose some detail. Let's push things really far. Let's take a picture of the pine cone on my Christmas tree. And I think that we're going to get a more extreme result here because we did zoom in so far. And I think that this is closer to how this should be used, right? You've zoomed in past the point of like degradation and you're trying to bring some details back out. And I just don't know what to make of these results. They almost kind of take on this like watercolor image look to them. And if we're zoomed all the way back out, does that look better before or after? To me, the before has more detail because it's noisy detail, but there, there's just more detail. When you get rid of the noise, you get rid of some of the detail. Am I crazy? I just want to know what you guys think about this one because I really just don't know what to make of this feature. Here's the thing, though. I don't want that last bit to give you the wrong impression to make you think that this is in some way bad. It's one feature that doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. But overall, I went into this thinking that, especially given the fact that my fingerprint scanner is currently not working and as some eagle-eyed... Uh, viewers pointed out there is a very small dent next to my fingerprint scanner that I have no earthly idea how it got there because to my knowledge it has never been dropped unless one of my dogs knocked it off a table and then put it back to keep from getting in trouble. They're pretty clever but I don't know if they're that clever. I assumed I would put the sim in there and within maybe five or six hours all I would be wanting to do is go would be going back to my Pixel 9 Pro Fold because I, I enjoy this device so very much, but that did not happen. I find myself being quite happy with this device. The OS feels so very fast and smooth. I like the way that it looks. I like the way that the camera performs, even if occasionally it will, I'll just say, miss the mark. I was going to say something that would require me bleeping out the video for some reason, but I'll just say miss the mark. It often absolutely crushes it and looks really, really good. The Z Fold 6 was not able to hold my attention and tear me away. But the OnePlus Open is still easily the closest thing to a device that is able to do that for a long term. I will be going back to the Pixel, but not nearly as rapidly as I think that I thought I was going to be. Oxygen OS 15 appears 
at least as far as I can tell, to be a pretty big success for OnePlus. And the Open continues to be one of the best devices on the market. Guys, give me your thoughts down below on this update. Are you still daily driving that Open? What kind of a difference has this update made for you? Have you noticed any other smaller changes, any bugs you've been dealing with? Again, hit those comments down below. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.